it's Liam here again and in this video I'm going to be showing you the Atari 7800 video game console. Now before I crack on I just want to tell you a little bit about the 7800 itself. Now the 7800 was released after the, the Atari 2600 and before the Atari Jaguar and as I mentioned in a previous video Atari Jaguar being Atari's last ditch attempt at being a video game console maker. That was their last. Now the Atari 7800 wasn't a directly released after the 2600. There was a console that came before it, which was released in 1982, I believe. Could be wrong on that, but it was 1982, which was the Atari 5200, which sadly had a very short shelf life. It was discontinued in 84 because it was complete rubbish. I will feature it though in a future video, but for now I want to show you the 7800. Now the main reason the 7800 was released was to compete with what was then some up-and-coming powers in video game consoles, the Nintendo NES and the Sega Master System. Um, it, Atari did their best, obviously, to try and compete with the Sega Master System and the Nintendo NES. And although it was a good console, it just wasn't up to the same standards. The graphics just weren't quite as good, although they were better than the 2600, but obviously not as good as the Atari Jaguar. But it, it, it just died a death, unfortunately. It lasted for a while. It did reasonably well, but it just wasn't able to compete fully with the Sega Mass System and the Nintendo NES. But anyway, enough of the slight bit of history lesson there. I'll show you the console itself now, so here we go. Okay, guys, now this is the Atari 7800 console itself. And as you can see, the running theme with all Atari consoles is that they don't seem to want to put dust covers on them. I have no idea what the thinking is about that. Why not put a dust cover on the console? It stops you know the games from getting dirty inside and the console's connectors getting dirty. So why they left them off, I don't know. They even left dust covers off all the way up to the Atari Jaguar. But moving on. On the front of the console itself, there's your power button and your pause button. Strangely enough, the pause button is not on the game controller, but it is obviously on the system itself. Over here, you've got your select button and your reset button again. The select button being on the console itself and not on the controller. Now the controllers I will show you in a moment, the controllers that I have with my 7800 are actually game controllers, similar-ish, but with some buttons missing of course, similar to Nintendo, NES and Master System controllers. But if you bought this console in North America and some other places, you got a really awkward type of joystick, a lot more awkward than the original 2600 console gave you. There was nothing wrong with the 2600 joystick, but there was something wrong with the joystick that came with the 7800. It was rubbish. But if you bought it in the UK, like I did, you didn't get the control stick anywhere. You got the game pads, which I will show you in a moment. So let's have a look at the front of the console. Okay, guys, this is the front of the Atari 7800. As you can see here, and here, this is just where you'll input your game controllers. Now, these switches here on the front are not really used for anything to do with the 7800 itself. Uh, the reason that they are there is because the Atari 7800 was backwards compatible with Atari 2600 games. And Atari 2600 games required a, a, a switch to be flipped to change the difficulty on the games. Uh, that was covered obviously on my 2600 video, the switches on the front of that. But that's what these switches are for, just to change the difficulty on the 2600 games if you did use them. Now I'm not sure in fact if any 7800 games actually utilise this. I don't think they did, but if I am incorrect, again please do let me know. But that is the front of the console, as you can see. And then if we go up, that's what we saw before. So there we go. Right, so now I'll show you the rear of the console itself. Okay guys, now this is the rear of the Atari 7800. Not much to show you here really, just got your normal standard RF input here and your AC connection here for your power. Now the really strange thing about the AC adapter though is the input for it here is really strange compared to most AC adapters inputs. If I very quickly show you the input on it. Here we have the input for the Atari. 7800. It's a very unusual input when compared to others. So it means that if this AC adapter ever broke or you lost it or whatever it may be, then 
you're going to have to find another one. You can't just pick up a Nintendo AC adapter or the Atari 2600 adapter or anything like that. I mean, with, with some retro consoles, you could swap and change the AC adapters and it was fine. The inputs on a lot of them were pretty standard. But this one is just unusual in itself. And you couldn't do that. But there we go. But not too much to show you on the rear of that. So let's get back to the console itself. Okay, guys. So that was the rear of the Atari 7800. Now let's move on to the controllers. Very different to the 2600 joystick controllers. Here we are. So now you can see what I mean when I said they were similar-ish to the Nintendo NES controllers. Apart from obviously missing the start and select buttons, which are on the console itself. And here's another one. There's just your RF lead there, with, but again, that's a standard cable. Now the controller itself, though, even though it looks very similar to a Nintendo NES controller, have a look at that. See, it's still got a bit of a joystick itself on the controller itself, so it's not just a normal D-pad. It's, it's not incredibly awkward, but just a plain D-pad would have been better. But still, it's better than the controller that you got with the American 7800 and those in other countries as well. I may one day try and get one of the controllers imported just for the sake of having it in the collection. But I've never really felt the need to get the controller itself because these are the normal official controllers that came with this system released over here in the UK. So there we go. That's the controllers themselves. Now I will show you um, one of the games itself and you can see how they vary in appearance to the Atari 2600 games. Okay, now the game on the left here, Firefighter, this is an Atari 7800 game, whereas the game on the right here is an Atari 2600 game. Now they're not incredibly different in appearance. There are some slight differences like this ridge on the bottom of the game, whereas it's just a plain flat back of the Atari 2600 games. The connections themselves are more or less identical. There we go. And they go in the console exactly the same way, just like that. You push it in. And as I touched on before, the 7800 is fully compatible with the Atari 2600 games as well. So if you've got 2600 games and you move up to this system, you can still play the retro games that you had with your older system, which is ideal. And that's it, not really too much to say on the games. There was obviously an increase in the graphics compared to Atari 2600 games, but they still weren't at the level of Nintendo NES games, which is why the system itself wasn't fully able to compete and eventually died a death. And there we go, I hope you like this review. That's it. Okay guys, that was a very brief review of the Atari 7800. Hope you enjoyed it. If you can get your hands on one of these systems, I definitely recommend it for your collection. It's always worthy to have an Atari system in your collection. Preferably all of them if you can get your hands on them. If you like this video, by all means, please support the show by rating the video, commenting, etc. Subscribing is even more ideal. And I'll see you on my next review. Take care. Bye.